Tuesday, and as we approach the champion hurdle, cast your mind back through so many festivals past. Scarcely can one horse have been asked to bear such a heavy burden of expectation. Constitution Hill and Nico de Boinville, who are surging here. But Constitution Hill sweeps majestically into the lead, rounding the final corner. He opens up by four, five, six lengths in the colours of Michael Buckley. Constitution Hill, a class apart, wins the Supreme. He's never come out of second gear here. Constitution Hill, virtually a common canter to take the grade one Labrook's Christmas hurdle. Extraordinary to think we've only seen him twice since the Supreme Novices last year, but both times he's been devastating. He runs in the colours of the man on my right, Michael Buckley. You came in here, sat on this sofa 12 months ago, Michael. I, I think you're probably quite a superstitious sort of person. Am I, am I right? Well, quite. I mean, it depends. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. I would have thought that last year I would have been uh, more nervous than this year, but it doesn't feel like it. Why, why do you think that is? I think, because in a, in a way, I think it's because it, there's very little rest from being reminded that that you're running in the champion hurdle. I mean, this horse has become such a, so popular with so many people, and and I'm really so happy that people are so many people are rooting for him. Um, I sort of found out about it in Newcastle. Really, the crowd there was quite extraordinary, and I thought. Well, he did this one amazing thing at Cheltenham last year, but I hadn't realised until we were there how much he'd captured everyone's imagination. And I'm really grateful. I just hope he puts on a good show again and, and keeps everybody happy, particularly you and me. <laughs> just wind back a, a year uh, ago. I mean, we, were, we were expecting him to, to run a big race. A lot of people were expecting him to... To win, but it was him versus John Bond. Which one was the best horse in their own stable? Even if people privately within seven barrows were pretty sure of their own opinion, when what started to unfold started to unfold at, uh, at the festival last year on that on that famous opening day and that famous opening race, what what was going through your head as someone who's seen so many good horses, owned so many good horses in the past? Well, I thought he had a good chance uh, of winning the race, um, and. Um, I guess, as is the case, we'd been off to, to Kempton, which Nicky does a couple of weeks before Cheltenham with a few of the horses, and uh, he worked there with Epitant, and he worked extremely well. John Bon actually worked on his own that year, and um, he he looked sort of eff effortless in the work, and I'd heard he and seen how well he worked occasionally, but nothing. I, I defy anybody to imagine that their horse could do what he did. I mean, it never occurred to me that he would win in the manner that he did. I mean, you couldn't possibly dream of something. I thought, gosh, if he could win by five or six lengths, how thrilling would that be? And, and it was billed as a sort of a super competitive event. A lot of Irish horses, Willie had... Well, he, he was playing around for some long time about which ones he would run in that. And I think Sir Gerhard went for the two and a half mile in the end. Um, but when you find out, well, I, I suppose it's never happened to me before, but uh, when you find out that, I'm sure John Magnet does this every year, suddenly you've got this one horse which comes and wins the derby in some impressive form, you think, yeah, I've really got something good. So to win by more than 20 lengths and in the way he did, it was absolutely extraordinary. I was out at the front with Nicky, and um, I came off the stand there, absolutely shaking. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. So, I, how did I feel? I was absolutely astounded. Uh, and then there was talk about going on and uh, and running again last year, and you didn't. You kept your, your powder dry for for this year. I, I get the sense sometimes with you that you're itching to to see a bit more of on, on, on the race course. Well, I think that um, it's very easy to, and understandable in a way, that people don't want to risk horses. Um, and I thought that Nicky got a pretty proud rap for a lot of the press by when we didn't run it at, um, at oh, Ascot. Mm -hmm. Well, no, oh, at Ascot yeah. this year, because the ground was, was uh, pretty firm, which was sad. We wanted to run. 
um, and the idea being that Epitant would go to Newcastle and we'd go there. Um, but um, so yeah, I like the idea of running. And when I bought the proclamation in Ireland all those years ago, I knew Paddy Prendergast Jr., who trained him, was a pal of mine. And I rang him up and I said, "Nicky thinks I should buy this horse. You know, do you think that's a good idea?" And he said, "If you leave him with me, if you buy him and leave him with me, I'll win you the champion novice at Punchestown." So we bought the horse, and I said to Nicky. I think I'm thinking of leaving him in Ireland <laughs> to run in, in the champion novice. He said, no, 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 no. He's got to come back, got to come back. And I said, well, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to put him in a field. I mean, why don't we have a go? Um, and um, anyway, he won very impressively. So I think uh, I like the idea of running the horses. I mean, it's fun to see them run, particularly if they're good. Yeah. And, you know, you get the thrill of and the buzz of seeing them win and so forth. So, and because, and they still are, there's comparisons. I was just looking at a newspaper outside before I came in here. One of them was talking about his time versus Honeysuckle last year, and it would be so many lengths or whatever. Um, and, of course, the races will run in a different way, so you can't take it that it would exactly have worked out that way. But it certainly looked as if, on the way he performed that day, that if they raced against each other, he would have at least been competitive. So it would have been fun. So, yeah, I love the idea of having a go. What was patently obvious when I went down to the Lambourne Open Day on Good Friday was that the horse was telling you, I mean, you just had to look at him, that he'd had enough of the year. And it's easy to get, and I'm as prone to this as anybody, it's easy to get lulled into the idea that you win by 20 lengths, you must have had an easy race. Of course, you win by 20 lengths, and in a time like that, because the horse put everything into it. It's the first real race he'd had. Um, maybe, I mean, gosh, this sounds a bit conceited, and I don't mean it this way, but if you look at how these races have unfolded, it's possibly the only real race he's had in that he's managed to win the others fairly comfortably. Mm -hmm. And that was the one, probably because of the atmosphere <coughs> of the race, a huge crowd and all the noise, and also, I suppose, if you're Nico, you want to think, gosh, I'm having fun here, why not? Yeah. Um, it was the one where he probably did have a hard race. And he was a very, he was a much weaker horse last year than he is now. He was very young. Um, so, anyway, there it is. Off we go again. A week full of drama coming up. <laughs> all right, so how do you personally cope with, with all this? Do you just soak it all up and enjoy it and relish it and every opportunity to, to talk about it and engage with it or not? Um, I had a lunch this week with a very old friend of mine who's an actor, who's actually on the board of, he's um, not on the board, but he's a member of the Academy. And I said to him when he was telling me about, it's the Academy Awards tonight, mm -hmm. about what he voted for, because there are people that think that the, that the movies up this year aren't very good. And he mentioned what he'd voted for, and I said, oh my God, four-legged, the four-legged week starting on Sunday, not on Tuesday, because there's a, in the doc, best documentary, there's a film about donkeys. And so he voted for that as the best movie, <laughs> and for Eeyore, who's the star, as the best <laughs> male actor. And but, he's actually a member of the Academy. He is actually a member of the Would Academy. Would we know him? You would know him, but I better not say what his <laughs> name is, because I don't want to embarrass him. But um, Is he a regular luck on Sunday Viewer? No, no, he lives, no, in, no. He lives in America. He's English, not. but he, no, he's not a. Sorry, I mean, you're not on the forefront of I, his mind, Nick. I know. Unlike there are the rest of us. <laughs> so, the donkeys taking centre stage tonight. Anything but taking think, centre stage on Tuesday. Yeah. No, hopefully there won't be too many donkeys running around at Cheltenham. Yeah, he's. I think the film's up for best best documentary of the year. Um, I. I don't mind talking about the horse. I ne I never, I've never minded talking about horses if I've been lucky enough to have a nice one because I think it's great. They have this moment in time when they're doing well, when they're relatively famous. Nothing like this creature, though. But, um, and so I've always sort of enjoyed it. Um, I had a phone call from, from um, Greg Wood, who's got some piece in The Observer today, 
And um, he rang me on Friday, and I was saying, gosh, when I first went to Cheltenham, aged about 20, I ended up in the same hotel as Richard Berlane, who became a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've sort of chatted away about horses to all sorts of people. So what do I do? Yeah, I talk to people like you. I saw you on a dinner on Tuesday, potter around, talk nonsense, make a fool of myself, and try and look happy. And I'm <laughs> fretful, and I don't sleep very well. So, <laughs> I mean, um, when the race is over, one way or another, I'm going to feel exhausted, whatever happens, because the sort of adrenaline will stop. Uh, this horse has given so many people a massive adrenaline rush already. Uh, we're thinking about him him on Tuesday winning the race, but many of us are, are wondering how far he can win the race by. Does that does that bother you, or are you just concerned that he gets past the post in front? Or are you concerned with legacy and impact and history? I just want two pieces of luck, really. One is to... Um, for the horse to get there in the best shape he can be in. So, you know, it's a couple of days to go, but there are always things that can go wrong with horses, as we all know, sadly. And then to Nico to have luck in getting round and 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 hopefully have a, a clear run and, and the horse doesn't make any mistakes. I mean, I did feel, looking back on it, where the way he jumped in the straight in Newcastle, I mean, I thought he was sort of showing off a bit. It was wonderful to watch. And I thought, God, there's not much room for error. Mm. I mean, if he skates a fly... by that much. Yeah, and, you know, and he really, <clears throat> in the last couple of hurdles, he just launched himself at them. And um, for any horse that does that, if they just get it a little bit wrong and hit, hit the top, there's going to be the most almighty well, tumble. So I just want him to get there in good shape, to have a run well for Nico to have a good ride, and what will be will be. Will I? I'll be thrilled to bits if he wins by um, by a neck, <laughs> because you know when you've grown up looking at following jump racing as long as I have. I mean, this is just a horse race, as the others are just a horse race. But the mystique of winning the champion hurdle. I mean, there were three days of Cheltenham in, when I first went, um, and so winning the champion hurdle or the champion chase or the Gold Cup, were always amazing. But I always felt that the champion hurdle and the Gold Cup somehow in my head always had preeminence. Mm. I don't know. As they should have. Um, over the over the champion chess. I, I mean, it's unreasonable, but that's just the way I felt. So all you can do as a kid is dream that, God, could you ever own a horse, number one, and then could you ever have one that could be good enough to run in a race like this? And here I am today still sort of childishly entranced by it, with a th one to three favourite. I mean, it's ridiculous, really. So I'd be delighted to win the race. In terms of distance, I'd like him, if he does win, to win by some sensible margin, just because everybody, and I said this earlier, but I'm so grateful that everybody enjoys the horse so much. Um, you know, people... If you're a movie star, they say, I want to thank my fans and everything. But it is, it is fun that everybody loves a horse. And um, some guy stopped me in the street the other day and said, I love watching your horse. I, hope, I just hope he wins. And so I hope he puts on a good show. And if State Man's too good, State Man's too good. Um, but I still hope, even God forbid, that he gets beaten. I hope he puts on a good show. Um, you talk about the champion hurdle in the Gold Cup. And this isn't the first time you've... you've talked about both races and indeed you've talked about him maybe one day being able to try and emulate Dawn Run by, by winning a Gold Cup. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yeah it's I've not, got a good a vivid imagination, haven't I? <laughs> well, you say that, but you're, you know, it, it's been thought by so many people um, and it, it's sort of taking racing back to where it was several years ago when people did things that were a little more unusual by, by modern standards. Are you are you going to take your trainer on this journey to to the Gold Cup with Constitution Hill? Do you think? Do you think that's one that he he relishes th the same as you? I think that uh, I think that the fantastic thing about Nicky is that he wants to care for his horses as much as he can. He gives them time when they're young, if he thinks they need them to 
to develop and mature so that he can get the best out of them or the horse can get the best out of itself in the, in the long run. And because he's quite, um, uh, has had a number of good horses, which haven't run as often as either the public would like, because, listen, if this horse could run every week, wouldn't it be fun? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd love it. And the people that love the horse would love it. But inevitably, you can't do that for the horse's welfare. Plus the fact that the program is short of allowing that to happen. So if you miss one race, you're suddenly short of races. As happened, we would have loved to run Constitution Hill between Kempton and now, but there wasn't really much of a race. I mean, Nicky is, I don't know, I saw you laughing with him in some interview saying, no, they've taken it away, Nicky, the contenders is no more. Yeah. It won't come back. Yeah. And um, he, that was a race he liked. It wasn't a particularly valuable race, but the timing was good. Uh, we didn't feel inclined to go to Dublin because this horse has had, only had five uh, races. He actually doesn't, although he's said to be six, he, hasn't, he doesn't get his sixth birthday until after the champion hurdle. He's a very young horse mm -hmm. it, um, in terms of what his career might be. It might go on for some long time if we get very lucky. That's what we'd like. And so if you want to have a long career... Um, then you need to nurture the horse when it's young, obviously. Um, and uh, Which is what William Haggis did with Baid. I mean, he didn't run at all as a two-year-old because he felt it was too immature. And look how he turned out. So um, would Nicky go on the journey? All of a, Nicky's assistants, and I've known a lot of them, are told at some point or another when they're with him, when you go off to train on your own, always remember that this is entertainment and you've got to make it fun for your owners. So he loves fun. He loves to go on journeys. Golly, when, when I knew him early on, I had this friend called Pat Samuel, who was a lot older than me, a New Zealander. We had Grand Canyon. We took Grand Canyon to um, Merano in northern Italy. Then we dropped in on Paris on the way back, and he won the Prix de Compiègne, which was the big, their champion hurdle trial in the autumn. Then he came to Newbury and won, and then we went to America in November for the um, Colonial Cup, which he won. Only, only foreign-trained horse to ever win that. And actually, I had a young horse with Nicky at the time that I bought called the Bow Weevil, which Raymond Guest, who's famous for owning Survivor, he always wanted to run a four-year-old in the Colonial Cup because of the way to learn. So he bought it from me. I took him to Wolverhampton to watch when there was jump racing there. And to my horror, well, delight for him and horror for myself having so it won by about 42 lengths. I thought, oh God, what have I done now? Um, anyway, we managed to beat him with Grand Canyon. So Nicky loves traveling horses yeah. and he had horses for Pat and we traveled a lot in those days. Um, and so I got the, the, the taste early having taken this horse to America. First time I went to America for the fun of taking horses abroad because you meet so many nice people. I mean, you go to all these foreign meetings. You know, Think of all the really lovely people you've met in America when mm. you go out there. The people that win and some of them are a pain in the neck. You know, some of us always are a pain in the neck at some point or another. But um, I've met some fantastic people in racing. I was actually thinking or saying to somebody the other day, I went to Windsor with the first horse I ever bought and it won. My first horse race, I won. And it was so exciting. And I had this d dear friend who, I just want to mention this stupidly, who I'd known since I was a kid. He was a friend of my family's. And, and I talked to him a lot now. He's in his 90s. And he was the only person that came to the races with me. And I looked when the horse went across the line, I was screaming and hollering, and I turned around, and he was standing next to me with tears rolling down his cheeks. He's a lovely man called Colin Kennard, who spent most of his relaxing time in his life watching golf, tennis, athletics, and racing, because he, he was a scratch golfer and good rackets player. And he said, just to divert for one second, he said to me the other day, I've just rewatched all of Constitution Hill's five races, and... I've decided that he is one of my three favorite athletes that I've seen in my life. 
your horse, Emil Zatopek and Ben Hogan. Hogan was one of the five golfers, or however many there are, that have won the Grand Slam. And Emil Zatopek was a Czech athlete who he saw get a gold medal in the White City in 48. This is high praise. Yeah, Emil Zatopek was, was uh, voted about 2010 by some athletics body as being the greatest runner of all time. And in 1952 in Helsinki, he won the 5,000 and 10,000. Sorry, f racing fans, this isn't much to do with racing. Um, he won the 5,000 10,000 gold medal and then said, I've never run a marathon, maybe I'll try that, and won the gold medal of that as well. He was a pretty amazing man. And he's up there in, in, his, in his top three athletes. That's, that's, well, that's, I mean, it's only because he loves it's me. Nice. It's only because he loves me. He's trying to blow smoke in my left ear or something. But anyway, it's really nice. He's a, he's a horse of a, of a lifetime. We know this. We know this just on, on, the, on the limited evidence that we've had put, put before us now. And you, you've had several who could have been put in that bracket from you know, Finian's Rainbow and Toast New York and, and so many other spirits. Son, if he'd, if he'd had a clear run of things, the proclamation, of course. Um, You've kept him, and you've kept him in your colours, and you, you've, had, you've had big offers for the horse. I mean, could it have ever crossed your mind to part with him? <laughs> well, um, I guess if, um, if I was running out of money, I would have had to <laughs> with the offers I, was, I got. But um, no, I was going back to that race just quickly, the first race, all those back in the 70s. And if that horse had lost, I probably that would have been it. I probably yeah. never bought another horse. But you were you were, I, you were transfixed. And 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 I've had a wonderful time. I mean, all through the seventies, I met you know John Magna and JP and people, and then became a great friend of of Robert Sangster's, and went off to he took me to the Melbourne Cup in nineteen eighty nine. I've I've had a fantastic time being around horses, mm -hmm. being around people who own horses. And people around horses, most of them, like to have a good time as well. Look, they're, they're super competitive, they want to win races, we all do. But they also like to have a good time. And you meet absolute nut jobs and crazy people, and I love all that too. So um, uh, I thought to myself, I mean, with the time I did think about, should I sell the horse? But actually, I'll have to change my life completely. Because, and I really do believe this, that anybody who was lucky enough to own a horse like this, and who knows what he'll be. So far, he looks, you know, more than pretty special. Um, there's not much point in taking a lot of money for him and ever buying another one. Certainly not another jumper. And listen, how uh, people, very few people get a horse like this. What, why would you ever imagine you could replicate it? Waste of time. So I decided that I'd rather have the fun of the horse and have less money. Yeah, and, and this experience is something that, cheesy though it sounds, money can't really buy. You can't buy this, no, you can't. You absolutely cannot buy tossing and turning all night long, <laughs> knowing that on top of everything else, you've got to appear and try and make sense for Mr. Luck on Sunday. <laughs> well, as well as then still spend two days waiting to see how he gets on. Um, yeah, I, listen, I, I, everybody says, you always think about what can go wrong, don't you? That's why when people say, particularly in jumping, you know, come back safe. Well, in a way, I, I never say that because, I mean, it's so obvious you're desperate for your horse to come back safe, but then... Poor spirit son got felled over by a virus in a box, so you don't have to go racing to have a tragedy. Um, I uh, so yeah, it's it's a hell of a lot of fun, and it's a bit stressful. But boy, when you win, is it a thrill? Well, dreams are are much more important if you can actually. But to just to quickly interrupt them. you because you, I'm sure you want to get rid of me. But I, as I, far as Nicky's I concerned, don't. Nicky, uh, your, if, the sofa is yours, Michael, for as long as you want. You it. asked me a question which I've gone all over the world with athletes and things. Um, I think Nicky would love if he thinks it's a, sensible, a relatively sensible thing to do. I w he would love to go on a journey with a horse. Which culminates um, in, in a gold well, cup. Well, maybe, if it makes sense. I mean, you know, you could, 
you're obviously not going to go from running in a two-mile race at the Gold Cup in all probability without trying something in between. In between. Um, but let's assume that he won on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to Aintree. And for then the he'll probably go to I mean, let's assume everything went beautifully then. Well, you could sort of think about life in the summer and think, well, now I've got a six-year-old horse who's still very young and he's done all this. I suppose we could do it all over again. But I can promise you that if we did it all over again, which, by which point you missed a year. So the only sensible thing then is you do it, try to do it all over again if, 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 it all, if all's gone well. I mean, that's a bit unimaginative, isn't it? You, you, I mean, you, you, you said it. So he goes chasing next year. Maybe, maybe. Well, look, we're not going to make any decisions until this season's over. And it's very presumptuous because actually... If we get thrashed on Tuesday by Willie, I suppose I'll have to say, well, I'll have to come back and beat your, try and beat your one that you turn up with next year. You could get thrashed by Nigel Twist and Davis. I could indeed. Or anything else. Yeah. So. I wasn't meaning to diminish no, anyone else. No, not, not, not at all. But you think something different is what appeals most rather than just going wash, rinse, repeat year on year on year on year. So. Well, it's. I, Part of it is my temperament. I, I'm, I'm not very good at just doing the same things all the time. I mean, in whatever field it is, I don't. Mm. That's why you, you bought know. and sold a t so many businesses. Well, different or whatever. Types of or I like yeah. things. You know, I like. I, I love movies, mm. but I don't want to go to a movie every day, particularly if they like the ones that are up for Academy Awards tonight, because I don't even seen any of them, and they're pre pretty dull, most of them. Um, I'd so, vote for the one about the donkeys. I don't think you'd enjoy it. It's a nice idea, but um, <laughs> but um, they're a strange bunch of movies, anyway. But you you have a restless spirit. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'm a bit yeah. restless. Yeah, I like. I'm interested in lots of different things, um, and uh, so I like a variety of interests, variety of people. Um, yeah, that's that's me. So I think it would be. I think for Nikki and I. And for Nico, I think that if we just said, well, here we are with six. Now, let's assume this horse stays in one piece and we could uh, keep going for four years and become the only horse, probably the only horse that's ever won four champion horse. I don't know. Maybe there is one, but I'd, anyway, I, don't, I think three is the best. Um, but actually, I've got to say, wonderful as that would be, it would be much more fun to do something more imaginative. Mm. Agreed. Uh, to be honest, so yeah. you know, maybe you win the the English, the French, the Irish, and some other champion hurdle in some other part of the globe. I don't know. <laughs> Who I'm knows, looking but... forward to seeing the master of seven barrows when you suggest taking him down for the Australian champion hurdle. Um, or similar. Well, he did laugh at lunch when I saw him on Thursday, and he said, "Well, I suppose." I said, "What do you want to do next?" You asked me at Kempton what I wanted to do. I said, "I have absolutely no idea." What do you want to do? He said, well, you could try, if we win, you could try and win again, or if we lose, you could try and win next year, or we could go chasing. And I said, well, there is one other little alternative we could throw in there. And he said, this, this is my stupidity, mm -hmm. see. And he said, whatever's that? I said, well, we could have a go at the Ascot Gold Cup. He said, oh, I must say, I never thought of that. <laughs> right, well, it could be anything. It could be the, the Ascot Gold Cup, but I suspect it, I, it'll end up being... Please, the, nobody take that seriously. ...being the Cheltenham Gold Cup. By the way, the horses that have won three champion hurdles, Isterbrack, see you then, for your trainer, of course, mm -hmm. all those years ago. You remember that very well. Persian War, who I dare say you... you I remember. do, I loved Persian War. Um, Sir Ken and Hatton's Grace. Really? They're the five that have won... Three champion hurdles. You're the, you are the walking dictionary of racing. And I'm the only one with a piece of plastic in my ear as well. Uh, Michael Magley. <laughs> um, <laughs> with somebody yelling, get him off, get him off. <laughs> Not a bit. It's, uh, you, could, you could hear a pin drop down there. Um, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Best of luck on Tuesday. And let's thank hope. You. Well, we know, we know full well that Tuesday is not going to be a movie about a donkey. Let's hope he delivers an Oscar winning performance. We'll see you right after this. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.